Welcome to SSX Tricky. You won't regret this. Okay, picture this. It's 2001, you're booting up the newest EA Sports game on your PS2, and you're greeted by Run DMC's 1986 hit, It's Tricky. The song plays over images of highly stylized characters performing reality-defying snowboarding tricks interspersed with seemingly random footage of them dancing under a disco ball. This opening is a tone setter for SSX Tricky, and it tells you pretty much everything you need to know, except for the most important thing, which is the fact that this little snowboarding game would go on to become an icon. SSX Tricky is a game that stands on its own as an icon of sports game history, despite being the second title in a long-running franchise. While the rest of the franchise is looked back on with relative warmth, Tricky is the one most of us remember. But why? Like most of the other games in the franchise, SSX Tricky was developed by EA Canada, aka EA Vancouver, and published under the EA Sports Big label. EA Sports Big was intended to be an arcadey offshoot of the regular sports titles the company was churning out by the dozens in the early 2000s. The first title to be released under the new label was actually the original SSX, which was praised for its addictive gameplay and gorgeous visuals. Really, it put EA on the map as a viable competitor in the extreme sports gaming space. Before the SSX series, there was Cool Borders and 1080 Snowboarding, but the SSX series really pioneered the arcade sports racing games of the era. The gameplay forced you to perform tricks in order to get an edge on your opponents. It was tight, technical, and a hell of a lot of fun. Games like Freak Style and Jet X20 were built off the back of the SSX model, and the first game definitely deserves credit for that. Specifically, series creator Steve Rex Schaffner deserves credit for that. Even if, in hindsight, the original SSX is a bland prototype for what came next. I'm gonna get my name on a baseball cap! It's hard to call SSX Tricky a proper sequel, which makes its iconic status all the stranger. Coming out only a year after the first game, Tricky is more like an upgraded version of its predecessor. The tracks remain largely the same with most only getting a few added shortcuts, the changes to the graphics were on the subtler side, and sure they added new characters, but they also kept a lot of the originals. On paper, there was nothing substantially different about Tricky. But not unlike other games we've talked about on this channel, what really set Tricky apart was its attitude. I'm gonna smear you next time. Tricky leaned heavily into the burgeoning personality of the first SSX game. The core gameplay took its arcade description to a whole new level, with gravity being more of a suggestion than a fundamental law of physics. The small changes they made to the tracks facilitated some absolutely impossible uber tricks, and watching your score go up had never felt more satisfying. But the race mechanics were only the beginning. While the characters in the first SSX game were certainly distinct, they were also pretty unmemorable. Tricky didn't have that problem. With a cast of characters largely made up of cultural stereotypes, things could get very ugly very fast. But for 2001 standards, Tricky actually did a pretty good job at giving players a fun and diverse group of people to play as. Due to the financial success of the first game, EA Canada was able to bring in some sought-after talent to voice the new additions. Lucy Liu, David Arquette, and Billy Zane all lent their voices to SSX Tricky characters and they each had their own personality which shone through in their cartoonish voice lines It's like taking candy from a baby! Detailed animations, customizable outfits, and trash talk. Moby, you like yesterday's coffee! A little weak in the bean! Don't waste your breath, forget about it! Oh yeah, one of the best parts of SSX Tricky outside of the actual play mechanics was the rival system. Picking on an NPC snowboarder by performing knockdowns would make them hostile towards you during events and characters would even insult each other before and after races. This seems like such a small detail, but it wasn't something other games in the genre were doing at the time. It wasn't even something the previous SSX did. These cutscenes really gave the world and characters more color. It also made for an interesting dynamic where you really did want to win, if only to shove it in Luther's stupid face. Now, the gloves are off, chump. Whatever, eat my snowboard. Of course, there was also the game's soundtrack. Like the original SSX, Tricky's soundtrack was dynamic and would change depending on how well you were doing in a race. But while the first game's soundtrack was fairly generic, Tricky's was, well, iconic. It's Tricky would play every time you landed a particularly cool trick, and the rest of the music featured a healthy mix of hip-hop and techno. It helped to separate the soundtrack from the punk and rock that saturated the sports game genre at the time. Essentially, everything SSX did, 
Tricky did better. With the confidence of a good game under their belt, EA Canada took a solid concept and improved on it. Not through major mechanical innovation, but through stylistic choices that made for a much more memorable experience. Its arcadey, trick-focused gameplay, larger-than-life characters, and clear-cut personality made it an icon. But its success definitely feels pretty accidental, seeing as the series moved on from this perfect mix of style and substance for the later installments. In 2003, the developers wanted to make the next SSX game into something anyone can pick up and play. This resulted in SSX3 toning down the arcadey physics in a major way. It's by no means a hyper-realistic game, unless you count snowboarding between skyscrapers on a twisty slide realistic, but it's just not the out-and-out -out wild experience that Tricky was. Fan-favorite characters were removed, and you and your rival would no longer trash talk before or after a race. 2005's SSX on tour is where things really started to go off the rails, though. Series mainstays like creator Steve Reckschaffner were jumping ship, and the newly appointed art director Rich Curran did a full 180 on the game's soundtrack. In his words, he was brought on to change the overall sensibility and style of the game and wanted to focus on the second coming of rock. 2007's SSX Blur, the only game not developed by EA Canada, abandoned the classic arcade gameplay in favor of using Wii motion controls. The dragonfly, I feel better knowing you'll be cheering me on the whole way down. Oh, I'll cheer you on, but I'm not taking you out. And the 2012 reboot tried to return to the comedic fun of Tricky, but they rooted themselves in real life locations instead of the arcade style tracks fans had fallen in love with. At every turn, the SSX developers seemed to make decisions specifically to dilute the personality Tricky had worked so hard to build up. Maybe these changes can be blamed on the loss of Steve Reckschaffner and other early devs. Maybe as the games grew in popularity, EA Canada had to deal with a lot more direct oversight from Electronic Arts. Or maybe they just didn't understand what made the thing they created so beloved. More likely, it's a combination of all of this and more. Whatever the reason, it doesn't make any of Tricky's successors bad games. It just makes them feel a lot more corporate. For the most part, it all worked out for SSX. The lowest Metacritic score in the whole series is a 74, and you can kind of chalk that up to the motion controls. The SSX series is good. The games are good. But a good game is not the same as an iconic one. Only one SSX game holds that honored title, and that's the personality-driven, chaotic, arcadey gem that is Tricky. Today, snowboarding games are a pretty dead subgenre. The most recent high-profile release was probably Ubisoft Steep all the way back in 2016. And while that game is beautiful, it's not tricky. It's difficult to imagine another game living up to that legacy, whether it's in the SSX franchise or from a completely different developer. So maybe it's time for a remake. EA still holds the rights to the SSX franchise, and we all know how much they like to make easy money. A remake of Tricky with current-gen graphics and the return of the voice cast would probably be the easiest money they've ever made. But considering we haven't heard anything from SSX in almost a decade, that's just a pipe dream, right? Maybe not. Remember Steve Reckschaffner? The man behind the whole SSX series? Well, he and his dev company Supernatural Studios have been quietly toiling away at a snowboarding game he's described as arcadey, amazing feeling, very accessible, competitive, and fun. At the moment, we know very little about the game other than its codename Project Gravity, but it's perhaps our best hope at recapturing the SSX Tricky magic. Tricky's flawless arcade-style mechanics and unmistakable attitude made it the successful game it is today. And despite that success being seemingly accidental, no one has a better chance at understanding and replicating it than the person who created it. And that's all we have for you today. If you're still here, please make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe to Nerdstalgic Gaming so you don't miss out on our latest releases. In the meantime, let us know, would you play an SSX Tricky remake? Are you excited for Project Gravity?